Hi everyone, what I'd like to do this afternoon is share with you a piece of free software uh, that was recommended to me at a presentation that I attended at a local uh, nature center. And the software is called Stellarium. This is uh, Stellarium's website. It's just www.stellarium, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-I-U-M dot O-R-G. And this is, that software is totally free and it is an amazing piece of star viewing software. Uh, you can download it for Linux, you can download it for Macintosh, Windows, and then they've got a user's guide. Uh, on their website they have all kinds of information from the user's guide to different features for the most recent release. You can get older releases, uh, lots of different things that you can do. But it's a great piece of software and as I said it's absolutely free. So let's get to the software. I downloaded and installed it on my computer and this is the initial screen that you get when you open up Stellarium. This is a picture from Mequon, Wisconsin, which is where I am right now. You can see here Mequon, Wisconsin at the current time, which is August 2nd at 5.43 p.m. Now there are lots of different things you can do to configure this software. On this sidebar menu, you can tell the software exactly where you are, which I did. I configured it to say that my default area is Mequon, Wisconsin. You can set your time and date for whatever you want. I'll show you that a little bit later. You can also do time and date, uh, set that down here by going forward and backwards. You can configure uh, your views. You can show these are, would be all of your default markings when you first start up, both your sky vision as well as uh, things that you want, grids that you want to have on the view when you first open up. You can pick different landscapes. This one is Guerin's in France. If I wanted to see what things look like with a Mars, foreground that's what I can do here but Garen's is my choice if you're a big fan of flowers you can go with this one but Garen's works so on the side here you can also look for specific objects and it will find those objects for you you can configure the menu in any way that you want a navigation tools, scripts, plugins, pretty much this software is very very flexible. But where the rubber really meets the road is the menu down here on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I am going to show you right now at 5.30 obviously it's light out in Mequon. So I'm going to advance forward through time to this evening at 10.30. I overshot it a little bit. This is this evening at 11.30. Uh, you can advance faster or slower by just clicking on the buttons a little bit differently. Now, this is the night sky looking to the south. This One of the options is looking at the cardinal directions. I can look up. There's Altair. I can look straight up. There's Vega. Here you can see the summer triangle with Altair and Vega. And don't recall. Now the third star of the Summer Triangle is Deneb. So I'm going to look back down. So I've got the horizon. I can look to the west and I can see Arcturus. Doesn't look like Speak is up yet. Now I've got my constellations. I've got the Big Dipper. We go around here. We look to the north. And say you wanted to try to find the constellations. So now I want to know exactly, even though I can see the Big Dipper, not everybody can. So I go down here and I want to pick my constellation labels. This is Ursa Major. Or I call it the Big Dipper or the Bear. Now that's not enough. I want to see the lines so I can visualize it. Here is Ursa Major. And if I scroll around to the north, I can use the two pointing stars on the front of the Dipper Cup and I can go up here to Polaris and if I wanted to know what that star is I click on it and it tells me that is Polaris and that it is part of the constellation Ursa Minor. But 
Now, if I wanna be a little bit more precise and I wanna be able to have a grid over the top of what I'm looking at, I would do that this way. And I've got two different types of grid. Um, this grid gives me an equatorial grid and I can see the direction that I'm looking starting at north which is zero here and I can go all the way across I'm gonna take this other one off because it's kinda of, it's too busy there we go 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees all the way north south east west and if you look up you can see where they all come together and then you look here, this is 10 degrees off the horizon, 20 degrees, 30 degrees off the horizon. So if I wanted to be able to find Cassiopeia tonight, I know that I need to look 40 degrees, which is northeast, and I need to look 20, 30, 40 degrees off the horizon, and that is going to find Cassiopeia for me. If I take this, take my laptop outside, I don't want to wreck my night vision. Now I'm going to click this. And now I have night vision mode. And this won't, uh, this has red, which the eyes are not real sensitive to, so it won't, uh, won't wreck my night vision. This, all this information is kind of busy for me, so I'm going to go back to my setup. And I'm going to say, I want to say short information. I don't want all that information, which is better. Save my settings and close. So now that doesn't cover up as much. But it really does a nice job of helping you to find the different constellations. If I want to look straight up, I'm just navigating with my arrow keys. Now I've got the Big Dipper down here. And then I've got Draco, who is in between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And then I've got Draco's head, which is here. Now I scroll a little bit further over, and I've got Hercules. And looking to the west, I have the Corona Borealis. But if you're looking for a nice, fun-to-use piece of software that will help you find constellations, uh, this is definitely it. I'm going to take this back out of night mode because it's a little bit easier to see. If I wanted to find, and I'm using my telescope, and say I wanted to find something like uh, nebulas, now I click here, and now all of the nebulas that are going to be here are going to be visible. And let's go into the Great Nebula of Andromeda. I click on this, and now I've got the Great Nebula of Andromeda. Let's see what that would look like through a telescope. And I click on the ocular view, and there it is. Go back out. And I can look at all the different nebulas if I decide that I want to, like I was looking at them through a telescope. Now I'm going to go back out again. One real, another really cool thing is I can go forwards or backwards to any date that I want. These are all of the summer stars. Now let's go to winter. And we're going to go through the times and days. And things are advancing pretty quickly. Now we are in December. Two thousand and eleven. This is this is October. I'm gonna go a little further. And now we are on December twenty third. You can see all the circumpolar constellations are the same. However, now we get now if we look up, now we see Ursa Major, we see Leo in the sky, we see Gemini the Twins, these are some of the winter constellations. You see everyone's in a little bit different place, but you can pretty much do whatever you want with this software. As I said, it's free and uh, it's probably one of the coolest uh, free pieces of uh, stargazing software that I have uh, seen in a really, really long time, so I wanted to share it with you. Well, if we want to go back to the present day and present time, I'm going to click on this. We're back to uh, 553 in Mequon, Wisconsin, and uh, you can still see the various constellations in the sky, but that's all I had for today. 
Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Please try this software. I think that you'll really enjoy it. It's a great way to share the stars with your kids, especially if you have a laptop or something that you can take outside with you. And uh, if you like my videos, please favorite it, subscribe to my channel, and as always, hey, take your kids camping. Thanks everybody and have a great day.